Welcome, this is the Operation Safety Maintenance Troubleshooting and Repair Guide for the Compressed Earth Brick Press, the Liberator, as of December 2011, a beta release from Factory Farm. Okay, so there's a couple of general comments to make about the equipment that you're being presented with. First of all, this is life-size, real dangerous equipment, and all safety and operation procedures should be followed at all times, otherwise you lose, you risk getting injured, hurt, or even killed by these machines. They operate, they operate on 27 to 54 horsepower typically. That is not a plaything, serious equipment. The thing to keep in mind about the present release is that we are now in a beta release stage, meaning about 150 or so hours of field testing that we've put on these machines, but that's not, not enough to actually see all that can go wrong with these machines maybe there are still failure modes we haven't seen and only after thousands and thousands of hours of testing will the machine really stabilize and get ready for general adoption by the rest of the world so right now this is for the developers and makers people who are aware uh, we do not recommend this to be used by people who do, do not have awareness of their body of, of heavy equipment we do not recommend that you use these things alone and you should all, always wear safety equipment such as hard hats, eye protection, ear protection, gloves and things when dealing with this equipment. There's another important point to keep in mind about these machines that, that open source ecology is producing open plans distributed to the whole world so a lot of the machines may be custom. So be careful if you're exposed to one or more of the machines because they may each be slightly different. So now the basic operation and safety on the compressed earth brick press. As far as the initial setup of the machine, you want to start with, with um, level area. If the machine is on unequal territory, since it weighs 1,600 pounds, it's a good idea if you're adjusting the legs, support this on, under a jack and then lower or raise your legs accordingly. And so yeah, these fall to whatever height you need and then tighten them down as needed and then release the farm jack. So that's, that's the procedure for setting the machine up in the field. You need three things for this machine to work. There's, there's electricity to run the controller. It's a fully automatic machine. There's hydraulic fluid power, which actually runs the cylinders. And the third is, is the control I guess you can say logic of the controller which is in this box here to give the commands to the machine. So let's start with a power connection and the safety involved around that. So you plug in the machine to the power using this cord and the power source is a battery. Whether it's on a power cube or an independent battery, wherever your electrical power is you have to connect to that make sure that you got the polarity correct. When you start the machine up, what you do first is you connect the hydraulic power to, to your power source with the hoses here. And after that, when the power is going to the machine, turn on the controller and then step away and the machine will run. Then you load the soil into the hopper Upon starting, do not fill the hopper up all the way. There's bridging risks, especially if the soil is wet. So start by getting a feel for how much the machine can handle before it starts bridging. And especially upon startup, if the soil is just in there and it's sitting there, it will compact it and it might just naturally form a bridge. So when you turn the machine on, don't start with the hopper full, certainly. Uh, other points, uh, make sure that the safety rope is on. Um, and before you start, it's a good idea by all means is general safety, just a visual inspection of everything, everything such as are the, all the hoses intact, have they worn out, are there any loose connections or if hydraulic fluid leaking anywhere, um, are bolts loose, you, you might want to visually inspect, see if all the bolts are on tight. Um, the machine does vibrate and it's all designed for disassembly primarily, so you do have to pay attention that all the bolts are, are tight. 
So now a basic explanation of how all the parts of the machine work, starting from the hydraulics. So the hydraulic connection to whatever power source you have comes through these main hoses. They're quick connect, quick connect standard. You can run a power cube. You can run this off a bobcat, a tractor, or whatever. You just have to make sure you've got the correct fittings. And this is the main power going into the, the main hydraulic solenoid which is an electronically controlled device that, that actuates all the parts from the shaker motor, main cylinder, secondary cylinder by the, the microcontroller. The power, uh, the power line here, which is this line here from whatever source you have, goes into the solenoid and there's a bypass, safety bypass valve that's a safety feature right here, which if you've got some kind of a stuckage or some block, this will bypass fluid and relieve pressure from the machine. There's three, three valves, uh, three sections in a valve. The first section contain, controls the main cylinder, so these hoses should go to the main cylinder. The second set of hoses goes back uh, to, the, to the secondary cylinder, and this third set of hoses goes, as you see here, straight to the shaker motor. There's one setting here, the pressure setting on the main relief valve. So what you do here is you unscrew this, this nut and use an Allen wrench to adjust the pressure to measure the system pressure on the compressed earth brick press. When you're first starting and you want to set it to two to 3,000 PSI, take the inlet hose, uh, plug in your pressure gauge into the inlet hose and into the device that's providing power and you can read the power straight off from the inlet hose. Here's another point about the secondary cylinder to explain the hydraulic connections here. The power in to the secondary cylinder goes in through your hose to this device here, which is a flow control valve. And what this does is both controls the speed of the secondary cylinder and has a pressure relief, separate pressure relief for the drawer cylinder. And the purpose of that is we don't want to run this at between two or 3,000 PSI. We want to run it at about 700 PSI or the minimum amount that still gives you a lot of force to break twigs or whatever, <laughs> break little pebbles, but not so much that if there's some break, some, some block or something that you'll actually end up breaking the machine. So you want to reduce the power, reduce the, the pressure on the secondary cylinder. That's important. To set the flow control valve, take some kind of a movable, <laughs> some kind of a handle and this, this twist basically to, to select the flow, uh, so adjust it up and down as needed to make the secondary cylinder go at the rate that you need based on the particular power unit that you're using. For the lower power, like 5 or 10 or 20 horse, probably, yeah, at the lower power you don't need to slow down the cylinder. At the limit, like say you're using horsepower, 5 horsepower, you wouldn't want to slow this down. You want it to move as fast as possible. At the 50 horsepower, you definitely want to slow it down because it would be basically shooting in and out like a bullet uh, and causing unnecessary stress. Okay, so let's explain now how do you adjust the secondary cylinder upon startup of the machine. That needs to be done once. You basically look at, with the full code in operation, you look at how far the cylinder is moving and then you adjust the position of, of each magnet to make it such that when a, when a drawer opens, you make sure that it opens the, the drawer, opens the chamber completely, and then when it ejects the brick, that it moves far enough that the hole in a drawer allows soil to go in fully. Points about maintenance. What maintenance do you wanna give to this machine? Basically, after you're done, done using it every day, clean out the hopper so you don't uh, basically get a stick and, and maybe clean out the chamber make sure that soil does not end up in there and dries up and gets all hard if you're pressing brick bricks that include cement stabilized bricks it's probably a good idea to at the end of the year or at the end of the day uh, wash out the hopper because the cement will will settle will solidify and you're going to be ending up ending up caking up your your hopper and compression chamber with with cement so that's that's going to be a problem 
big point about hose hoses here what you see here is a bunch of hoses that are pretty much all over the place <laughs> but in real operation what you will notice that upon pressure being sent through a hose the hose will flex like a muscle it will kind of jerk and if left like this these over time would rub against each other would rub against the frame so what you have to do is you have to bind them tightly you have to tie them up and for example here they can't rub like this this would basically wear them out after a few hundred hits a few hundred bricks and these hoses will the rubber will readily abrade the metal braid will show through and you'll end up with a broken hose so you have to protect have some kind of a, a tubing system or tie tie system what we did before you can see some of the other videos we had these firmly tied together so that even if they do do move and jerk they're not sliding past each other and they're they're not wearing out troubleshooting and repair regarding repair first of all I mentioned that just about anything on this device is designed for disassembly bolt together parts so anything can be readily replaced from from customer stock parts even the controller you've got snap-in boards and modules um, these are readily detachable from connections to the solenoid controller sensors are readily detachable uh, the moving part the main moving part here is the drawer that goes in and out but the friction is minimized because the drawer moves on roller guides so perhaps the we haven't had enough hours to really determine what what the failure modes will be but we'll see with due course we only had a few hundred hours on this if you turn on the power and things are not going what do you check for well the first thing is make sure you have hydraulic fluid flow you can basically touch a line to see whether you can feel a, a slight vibration in there and you can feel that pressure that flow is going through the through the machine will be a slight vibration if power is apparently on if electrical power is on and you can see you can notice whether power is going to the solenoids because these lights will light up on each of the solenoids if there's power no motion of the machine maybe the hydraulic power source is not producing power so check the the power source first um, if nothing is going on then check the electrical connections first if you know that the hydraulic power is flowing if there is no power going to the board but the battery is apparently good and the power is on then check the fuse we have a safety fuse here a 10 amp fuse and a fuse holder so make sure that that is not blown out to test the whole machine it's always a good idea there's a test code CB test code that's also linked to the documentation uh, use that to move the machine drawers and compression chamber and shaker manually by using a control computer and then you can you can troubleshoot whatever else is wrong to summarize the safety make sure that the safety rope is on the power cord also is is the safety rope around the perimeter of the whole machine and the first thing to say is that you'd never go beyond this when the machine is operating the sole shaker could be moving or the drawer and other cylinder may be moving those are moving parts keep your hands away uh, the shaker here the 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 shaker guard is not on but you can see the hammer of the shaker exposed right there but the guard should always be on an, an operation do not operate the machine without without the guard on the shaker to activate the sa safety rope basically you have to pull on it from any of the sides just like this okay that kills the power to the machine the machine will stop even though the hydraulic power is still on and the power cube is still on so in an emergency first cut off the power to the machine then stop the power to the turn off the power cube or whatever power source you're using